This is going to be the best video covering everything which you need to know about a balance sheet. We're going to take a look at what goes in a balance sheet, why they matter, how it connects with other financial statements, and we're also going to be taking a look at live examples from Amazon's, Tesla's, and Starbucks's balance sheet. Now, before we take a deep dive into everything which you need to know about a balance sheet, let's cover a few important ground rules which you need to know. Number one, a balance sheet. Well, balance sheets are very important because it's the only financial statement out of the three which tells the public, investors, and authorities how much assets and liabilities the company has. Assets, for example, are things like factories, machinery, equipment the company owns, and liabilities are how the company bought and financed those assets, like taking on debt to buy or to build a factory. Now, number two, every balance sheet follows one simple equation, which is liabilities and assets must equal shareholder equity. Essentially what this means is, if you get all the company's assets, if you were to sell it, pay off all the liabilities and whatever's left should belong to the owners of the company and the equity holders. Makes sense, right? Well, even if, even if it doesn't, we're gonna go through a balance sheet line by line. So after this, everything is going to make sense. In the financial model, which you see right here in front of you, we're going to be focusing on just the balance sheet. Now, I have a video covering the income statement and the cash flow statement, so do check that out after this. So. Just one more thing. Now, the before and after, I want you to pretty much just ignore this for now. Essentially, this Excel module that you see right here in front of you is what's in the Investment Banking Interview Guide and Financial Modeling course. This is used to help candidates um, answer investment banking technical interview questions. So say, for example, a common question is, walk me through the effects of depreciation going up by 100 on the three financial statements. So with this, with the before and after, you can see exactly the effects which takes place on the three financial statements. It's a lot easier than having to memorize the answers because here you can graphically see the exact changes happening live and you can change everything. So let's go back to understanding the balance sheet. So. Essentially, the balance sheet, like I've already mentioned, has all of the assets the company has. It has all of the liabilities the company has, and then it has all of the equity which the, which the company has. Now, this is captured in a moment in time. Let's break this down. Essentially, the starting section of every balance sheet is going to be the asset section. So. Assets are broken up into two main categories. You have your current assets, and then you have your non-current assets. Simply put, current assets are everything which the company owns and that can be converted into cash within 12 months. And conversely, non-current assets are assets which the company owns, but takes longer than 12 months to be converted into cash. So let's take a look at some of these examples. So current asset, the very first one that you're going to see is going to be cash and cash equivalent. Now cash, well, it's already cash. You don't need to convert it into cash. And cash equivalent, it's, this is essentially credit deposits. So when a company has a lot of cash on its balance sheet, it wants to get a return on, the, on that cash. So it will invest in overnight credit deposits where they will get a little bit of interest by investing into these specific instruments. Now, again, you can easily convert this into cash, so it's pretty much considered to be cash itself. Short-term investments. Think of this like um, company shares, where you can easily sell them instantly over the stock market. Again, very short-term, so you can easily convert this into cash. Accounts receivable. Now, this is like an IOU. So if you're going to be selling your stock, say you're Apple and you're going to be selling your iPhones, you give your iPhone to a distributor, but you might have to wait 30 days or 90 days before you actually see that cash coming into you. But you record the cash which you expect to receive under accounts receivable, but you expect to receive that within 12 months, hence why it's a current asset. Prepaid expenses. Now, these are things which the company has already paid for the next 12 months, like the utility bills, gas, electricity, insurance, things like that. Inventory. Inventory here, you can think of it as uh, clothing, iPhone, things which the company can easily move, easily sell within 12 months to get cash. Inventory is, of course, something which they can easily sell. So that's current assets. 
Now let's take a look at non-current assets. So a very common one is plant, property and equipment. Now the reason why non-current assets exist is because it takes longer than 12 months to convert into cash. It makes sense because if you're a company like Tesla, where you have a factory which produces electric batteries for electric vehicles, now you need to find a very special person in order who wants to buy this factory off you. Not every person wants to buy a factory which makes electric batteries for electric vehicles. You need to find a specific buyer and that takes time. And that's why plant property and equipment are non-current assets. Other non-current assets are things like intangible assets. So these are things like property rights, uh, intellectual property, patents, uh, branding, things which are, are which are pretty much which are hard to value, but again, hard to sell as well. Long-term investments. So you can think of this like buying another company or buying significant stakes in another company or buying significant assets. Things where if you wanted to sell, will take a long time to pretty much sell it. Goodwill. Now, goodwill from the perspective of an investment banker is pretty much when company A buys company B, but the price which company A has paid to acquire company B, whatever is above book value. So book value is assets minus liability. Whatever is above that goes into goodwill. And pretty much that's how you record goodwill, or that's how goodwill is created from an account, from an investment banking perspective. Now, adjustments can occur to goodwill, like goodwill impairment, where the value can go, can go down or up, and that has tax implication. Again, check out the a video on the income statement to learn more about that. But essentially, that's where you have your goodwill, and that's the meaning behind it, and it's a non-current asset. So that's your total asset. Now let's take a look at your liabilities. And liabilities are money which you owe. So you have current liabilities which, are, which you owe within 12 months. And then you have your non-current liabilities which are things which you owe but it's, it's a, a longer time period where you have longer than 12 months to repay back. So let's take a look at some of these. So current liabilities are revolver, short-term debt. Think of this as a corporate credit card. Revolvers are a way for companies to get access to financing very quickly, but at a very high interest rate. So again, like a credit card. Accounts payable, the opposite of an accounts receivable. Where an accounts receivable, you're expecting cash to come in within a couple of months, days, or in this case, within 12 months for an asset. Accounts payable is the opposite, where you have to pay this amount within a specified amount of time. But in this case, because it's short term, it's a current liability, where you've already received the goods, you just haven't, you just haven't paid for it yet, but you have to pay for it pretty soon. Accrued expense. Now, these are things where you have already received the benefit of it, but you just haven't paid it out yet. Say, for example, it's the middle of the month. So your employees have been working since the beginning of the month to the middle of the month, but you haven't paid them yet because payroll is at the end of the month. But again, they've been working from the start of the month to the middle of the month, but they will only get their wage, their salary at the end of the month. But from the start to the middle of the month, you've accrued those expenses. It's only when you've paid it out, that's when the, the, the accrued expense account goes back to zero. But until you pay that, you have accrued expenses. So now let's take a look at non-current liability. These are things, again, where you have longer than 12 months to pay for it. Deferred revenue. Now, deferred revenue are things where a company or someone has paid you cash to deliver something, but you haven't delivered it yet. Now, you can't record this as revenue because you haven't delivered the goods yet. So say for example, uh, a company pays you a billion dollar to build a huge complex. Now, this huge complex takes longer than 12 months, right? So you haven't built it yet, but you've already received the cash for it. Now, as you build, you are going to recognize some of that revenue, but until you have uh, a sufficient amount, you're not going to recognize it all. Deferred tax liability. Now, the opposite of this is a deferred tax asset. Now, the liability version, essentially it's 
when you have underpaid your taxes previously. Now this occurs when you are using different, different methods of calculating depreciation, a common one, and it's going to affect your taxes. So the liability, the deferred tax liability, is when you've underpaid previously, so you have to make up for that shortfall in the future. It's a liability because you owe money. Long-term debt, like the name suggests, is just a long-term debt where you have to pay back again, but it's, it's a long-term. So now you have your total liability. So again, at the very top, you have your total assets, then you have your total liability, and then finally, we are going to take a look at shareholder equity. Now, shareholder equity is not broken down by current and non-current. It's just constant. So, common line item which you're going to find under shareholder equity is going to be capital stock. So, capital stock it's essentially shares that which the company has that they just haven't issued yet. Now, these can pay dividends. These ha these have voting rights. And the difference between treasury stocks, it's when the company actually goes out on the open market and actually buys their own, buys their own shares. Now, when it does that, they, it, doesn't, it doesn't have voting rights. It doesn't, ha it doesn't pay dividends to the company itself. So those are two common line items which you're gonna find. Other common line items is retained earnings. Now, retained earnings is essentially the net income which the company has recognized on the income statement. So you get your net income, and then you also make adjustments like uh, if you're going to pay dividends. So net income, less dividends, pretty much goes into retained earnings. So that's pretty much a net income line item after adjusting for dividends and other types of expenses like that. Then other comprehensive income. This usually is a very small line item to capture every other, other thing. So the equation is total assets minus liability should equal shareholder equity. Now, this has to balance, it has to be true. If it's not true, then your balance sheet doesn't balance and means there's a mistake. And when you are building financial models, when even in the financial modeling course, there are steps which you have to take in order to fix this. And we go through the, 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 the common steps. But again, it's very important that, that your balance sheet balances. If it doesn't, then it means something's not right. So that's pretty much it for the common line items which you're gonna find in the balance sheet. Now let's take a look at a few live examples. So let's start off with Amazon. So as you can see here, Amazon, they have their current assets. So cash, short-term investments, and marketable securities, inventories, accounts receivable, and then their non-current assets, again, property, plant, and equipment, Operating leases, this is also common, again, depends on the company and the industry, but leases are a very common line item that you can expect. Goodwill and other assets. So that should form their total assets. So now let's take a look at their liability section. So accounts payable, we've already covered, accrued expenses, unearned revenue, that's another one. Um, Long-term leases, so that's another liability, it's a liability version long-term debt, other commitments, the, the, those are pretty much the liabilities. Again, nothing really stands out here. And then at the bottom here, you have your treasury stock, you have your capital stock, and then uh, retain earnings, and that's pretty, much, that's pretty much it. Again, nothing really stands out on the Amazon's um, balance sheet. So let's take a look at Starbucks. Again, current assets, cash, short-term investments, inventories, prepaid expenses, long-term, equity investments, PP&E, deferred income, goodwill. On the liability section, you can pretty much check out these uh, financial statements uh, of this video, but again, we've covered pretty much all the major line items. Accrued payrolls, benefit, again, this is just um, accrued expensive accrued expenses, uh, other liabilities, long-term, deferred revenue. And then on the equity section, retained income, again, nothing really stands out. Let's take a look at uh, Tesla. Let's zoom in here. So on the current asset section, nothing really stands out. Now here for Tesla, they've actually broken out 
um, some of their specific long-term items like solar energy systems. Again, depending on the company, if it is a significant item, they tend to break it out. Um, just like uh, research and development for um, for Tesla on their income statement. Did you check out those uh, those videos as well after when you're done? Um, the liability section, um, again, nothing really stands out as being something which is really unique. But once you've pretty much gone over the, the most common line items like we have on our Excel module, nothing should really surprise you when you do look at um, other balance sheets because they're pretty much the exact same thing. I mean, nothing should really stand out except sometimes they're just renamed. So um, again, you might have accounts receivable. Here is accounts receivable net, not much of a difference. Um, short-term investments, here's marketable securities, vendor, non-trade receivables. Again, these are pretty much non, uh, these are just current assets. So things which the company can liquidate for cash within 12 months. Non-current assets, again, nothing really stands out. Current liabilities, commercial paper. Um, it, these are pretty much derivatives or things, again, marketable securities itself, but where the company owes money for. So like, bonds, so things like that. On the, on the shell section, again, nothing really stands out that much, but that's essentially it for balance sheet. They're really simple to understand. Once you've gone through the Excel model like, like we have, it's really easy to understand.